Hey, what's good, good people? I am Travel C. W. Lynch, Mr. What What, and I am your self worth specialist. And this is the I Am the Possible podcast experience. The bonus track. Yes, this is the bonus track of the week, and you are rocking with me in the place to be. The I Am the Possible podcast experience, the place where possibilities become perspective. That's right, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. Take a seat with me. Rock with me for just a moment. If you're watching on the tube, and you should be watching on the tube, because this is an experience, the visual experience, live on the tube, YouTube. That's right. Um, So if you're watching and you're rocking with me on the tube, um, you guys know that I'm super excited about my new uh, set up here. We just lounging, man, right? We just having convos, conversations, man. Um, because I wanted to take, I wanted to be intentional with taking out all the Hollywood, man, all the Hollywood, right? All the sets and the lights, camera action. I just wanted to be a regular dude with some good information who empathizes and understands exactly where you are uh, and where you may want to be going in your life. Uh, because of you know everything that I share, I come from a pure place. I come from a place of experience, no hearsay. And um, I just believe, man, that if I've gone through it, then someone else has gone through it. And if I've learned something in the process of going through it, then it may be worthy or worth me sharing with you. You might find some benefit from it. So that's why we're here. Um, listen, but hold up, hold up. Before we get into everything else, right? Let me let me let me pause for the call. See, I'm I'm so excited, right? Right? I almost forgot. I didn't almost forget you, but I almost forgot what I was supposed to be doing. And that's pausing for the cause, right? That is taking a moment to show my appreciation, my gratitude for you. That's right. Because you are the reason that I do what I do. You are the reason I show up week in and week out every Wednesday, every Sunday with a message, with a word, with a encouragement, with a motivation, with an inspiration, with something because I'm so excited about the possibilities that are that God invested within you. And I just believe that life inspires life. And I just believe that um, with one word, with one idea shared at the right time, it could invoke, right, the infinite possibilities that are within you. They could, right, empower you, right, to see yourself in the most positive way, to see others, right, to see God and even the struggles that we go through as members of our society, um, that you may be able to see those things in a empowering light. Uh, And so that's my hope. And so that's why I'm so excited, because I don't know who's going to be watching. I don't know who's going to be listening, but there's always an opportunity for life to change and transform at just the right time with just the right word and so hopefully right this is your moment this is your time so let's jump right into it guys listen this week i'm going to be addressing something that maybe a lot of us you know we might not be able to say or we might not feel comfortable saying out loud right we might not be uh comfortable saying around certain people but I know it's real, right? Again, one of our purposes, right? One of our one of our intentions here in the I'm the Possible Universe is to create conversations that are real, right? And content, right? Information that you can feel, okay? We want to tap into those emotions and be real and be 100. So today, guys, look what I got for you. Look what I have for you. That's right. If you're watching, what to do when God disappoints you. Oh my goodness. That's right. That's right. I know. I know. It may be hard to say. No, God never disappoints. God, uh, he may not, you know, he may not come when you call him, but he's always on time, right? You know, we come up with all these church isms. We come up with all of these, you know, uh, you know, sayings and, and, and little, little uh, quotes. And, and, you know, we, we can come up with some stuff, man, to try to mask that pain, to try to mask that suffering. But no, 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 no. This ain't the place for masking, man. We're going to keep it real. We're going to keep it 100. Sometimes, and if you're anything like me, 
you feel like God's disappointed you. Yeah, that's real talk. Mm -hmm. That's real talk. Sometimes, man, we go through life and we hoping and wishing and believing and praying for something and it doesn't happen the way that we want it to happen, when we want it to happen, how we want it to happen, with whom we want it to happen. And we feel like, you know what, God, I'm disappointed, man. You, you, you disappointed me. So today we're addressing, I don't know if it's taboo or not. I don't know if it's, if it's, if it's challenging to, to say this out loud or to think this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it there. What do you do when God disappoints you? See, in the Christian circles, I know in church, we, we wouldn't dare say God disappointed me, right? We'll just clean it up with some, ah, you know, he ain't, he, you know, he, he, he may not come when you want him to, right? But it's always on time. And then we go to the parking lot, we sit in our cars and we, we bawl our eyes out, right? We crying all the way home or we, we, you know, we laugh it off, right? We dap it up in the parking lot. Of the church service right um and then when we get in our cars and we go home and no one's watching and no one's around we're screaming to the heavens lord where are you what's going on well why why how come you ain't done this how come you ain't showed up well today guys i want to share with you a very personal story and i'm going to share with you my experience when it comes to this to this very topic what do you do when god disappoints you so let's jump right into it guys this is real this is real talk all right, here it is, guys. As a part of the mission, right, for I'm the Possible, you know, podcast, really for this entire ministry, right? One of one of the things that we desire to do, right, is to empower you to see the very best, not only in yourself, but in others and in God and, yeah, and the struggles. We want you to see your struggles in the best life, right? Best light. And the struggles that we, that we endure as members of society. Now, one of those struggles guys get this one of those struggles right that many of us share we may not say it we may, we may not put it in these words but one of the things that we all share is this thing called disappointment and specifically as it relates to our relationship with god has god ever disappointed you have you ever felt like god disappointed you have you ever felt deflated messing with god have you ever felt let down in your relationship with god have you ever truly felt like yo man that wasn't cool like this this ain't cool right okay guys as we get into this i want to i want to kind of set this up first off i want to break down what the word disappointment actually means Disappointment is made up of two words, the prefix dis and then the word appointment. The word or the uh, prefix dis, right? If you're watching D-I-S, right? It literally means to either cut off or to be apart, right? It's, it's, it's a word that, describe, that describes a separation, okay? Separation. That's why here in the I Am The Possible Universe, one of the things that we specialize in is self-discovery, dis recovery, right? Self-discovery. It's the dissing, it's the separation of the cover, right? Any word that follows the D-I-S, you're going to separate yourself from it. You're going to separate something from it. So when you talk about self-discovery, we're talking about self may be covered up, hidden, right? And you want to this you want to tear away you want to pull apart the cover from self so that self is then revealed right i hope that makes sense so now in this context you got disappointment so it is the cutting away or the separation from our appointment what is our appointment that's our destination that's the place that we think that we're going that's the place that we want to go in life so whenever we're disappointed it means that i had an expectation I had a picture in my mind. I had I had a hope, right, of something happening. And for whatever reason, somehow, some way, it didn't happen. I was dis. I was cut away from the destination that I had anticipated, that I planned for, right? So that's what a disappointment is. So now with that in mind, have you ever felt like God let you down? Let's be real, right? Like he didn't come through on his word. Like he's taking too long to deliver you from the, quote, evil he promised he would. Right? 
Come on, God. Come on, guys. Be real. Have you ever felt disappointed with God? Have you? I mean, listen, I have. And I'm going to share a story with you. In fact, when I was most disappointed with God, and I'm not going to go too far into that one because I have another story specifically for this episode. But when my mother died, you know, God didn't promise me that she was going to live a certain amount of years. But I was hoping and wishing and praying that I would see my mother again after we had moved out here to Southern California. I was hoping that I would spend more time with my mother. And I never got back to be able to visit with my mother before she passed away. And I felt in that season of, time, uh, of of life and time, I felt like God disappointed me, man. Like, dude, you let my mama die. Guys, I mean, let's be real. I mean, have you ever been there before? Like, you let my mama die, man. Like, I was expecting to spend more time. I was expecting to see her again. I was expecting to fly her out to Southern Cal to enjoy the beaches and to see the mountains. And I was going to take her to Disneyland. And right. I, I, I had this grand plan. I had all of these ideas in my mind about what I was going to do with my mama. And you let her you 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 let her die. Right. Because we associate life and death with God. Right. Whether it's God has a time for you to die or whether it's you blaming God and saying you did it or you took my mother away or I mean, however you name it and frame it. When it comes to death, we always kind of look to God, don't we? God, why? Why me? Why? Why did you let this happen to us? Uh, Why now? Why did you take her? Um, But we but we definitely associate God with that result, don't we? So I was extremely disappointed with God in that season. And I went to a very dark place. I was hurt. I was frustrated. I turned back to pornography, right? I turned back to looking at magazines. I turned back to masturbation. I turned back to wanting to smoke weed, even though I didn't actually do it. But I mean, I had such a temptation, right? To go back into smoking weed, to go back into drinking. Um, I mean, but, you know, Going back to the pornography, going back to the magazines, going back to the masturbation, going back to, you know, really not going to church. When I did go, I sat in the back. I would show up late. Right. Service was already going on. I would sit in the back. I would show up late, um, you know, let them preach, let them do their thing. And then I would cut out early. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I was in a dark, dark place. And the way that I came out of that season was Pastor Kerwin L. Manning. Shout out to my man. Pastor Kerwin L. Manning, my spiritual father, he took me on a trip to Boston and, um, you know, God met me there. Right. I don't want to go all into the story because then it'll just take up too much time. But God met me um, early morning prayer. One morning we got up with the bishop and we met at the church early morning prayer. And God met me in that season and he met me in that time. And he spoke some things to me that made sense of her death. And, uh, you know, from that moment on, um, I got back right with God and he healed my heart. Okay, but I wanted to share that because, see, that's those seasons. That's one of those moments where you feel like God's he disappointed me. God, you disappointed me. Right. So now recently um, the conversation. Right. If you're watching on YouTube. Um, (laughs) I recently went to Starbucks, uh, with my spiritual father, uh, pastor Kerwin Manning, and we had a conversation about, um, about the prophecy, right? Well, the conversation was bigger than the prophecy that had been spoken over me when I was ordained. Right. But that got weaved in. Okay. And we're just talking about destiny and talking about, you know, going full time in ministry and, um, you know, going full time in the business. And so that that came up, right? That came up. And so uh, what we were talking about was the fact that I had and I'm going to break this all the way down. Right. But I had at the moment that he and Bishop Thompson laid hands on me the day I was ordained and they spoke words over me, prophetic words over me. um, And they described in those words as a minister, right? What I was going to accomplish myself, my wife. And I instantly painted a picture, right? I instantly had a picture in my mind, excuse me, of this worldwide ministry, right? I mean, instantly I saw myself on stages. I saw, you know, thousands of people in the crowd. 
I saw myself, you know, teaching and preaching many of the things that I'm I'm sharing with you now through this podcast platform. And I just saw myself going to Africa. I saw myself going to Japan. Right. And so anyway, I just had this amazing mental image of what that meant for me. Right. Because the things that they described um, aligned with my heart and my desire. But I instantly created an image right a picture of what that looked like and so that's really what i wanted to focus on for the remaining time that we're together is this picture and how it ties back to being disappointed remember disappointment right you have an appointment you have a picture a destination of what you want to do and where you want to go right so i mean i was at the height of my spiritual whatever you want to call it. I mean, I'm being ordained, y'all, right? I finally, in a sense, gave in to God and said, yes, I'll answer the calling to become, you know, your shepherd, your pastor. And um, so, I mean, I'm at the height of heights, right? You know, got my family there, my father there, you know, everyone's around me, my wife, you know, men, brothers who have been holding me down for years. They were all around me. Uh, Shout out to my man, Juan Morris, who captured the moment with this amazing picture. And so, I painted this picture in my mind of what ministry was going to be for me. And for years and years and years, I prayed, I believed, I looked for, um, I looked for, I worked toward that picture. And then there was a season and there was a time recently in the last couple of years where I became pretty discouraged, pretty discouraged, pretty deflated, right? I mean, I would still move forward. I would still, you know, be productive. I would still do the things that were necessary, right, by God's grace. But I mean, on the inside, guys, I was hurting. I was frustrated on my job. I didn't see ministry. And I'm going to keep this for a whole separate episode. But, you know, I saw ministry in a certain way. And, you know, through my mentorship with my mentor, you know, shout out to Kenichi Yoshida. He's helped me to, you know, expand my scope and my view on what ministry is and what what we were created and what we are all called to as ministers uh as it as it relates to representing god but the bottom line guys when it comes to being disappointed i came up with the picture in my mind of what this ministry was going to look like okay so i keep that in mind rocking at the starbucks and so for years i clung to the picture Remember, they spoke prophetic words over me. I came up with a picture. I came up with a projection because that's what a picture is. I came up with an image. I created an appointment. You see how this is all working together? The picture in my mind, the image in my mind created a destination. Ah, I came up with it. Emphasis, I came up with it. That wasn't what God came up with. It was what I came up with. They spoke prophetic words. I created a prophetic picture. <laughs> Take that one to the bank, right? That'll preach. They spoke, they spoke prophetic words. I created a prophetic picture of what that of what that looked like. Here's the problem. Okay. My picture ain't necessarily got to be God's promise. And God's promise ain't necessarily got to be my picture. (laughs) Their information was on point, but my image may not have been. Let that one sit on you for a minute. Their information concerning me, I see it now, right? Because see, this is about me sharing after I've kind of weathered the storm, after I've learned the lesson, after I've gone through it. That's why I can come back to then share it with you. Their information, oh, it was on point. Absolutely. But my image, my, see, their information, my image, my image may not have been on point. And that creates discouragement, letdown, aka disappointment. But where did I point that disappointment to? (laughs) <laughs> where did I point the disappointment, right? Let me adjust this mic so I can quit all these pee poppins, right? W- 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 okay, right. W- where did I point the disappointment? Well, I pointed it at God. I'm mad at God now. But God didn't give me the picture. 
God gave me the promise. I made the picture. See, many times our own, our, not God's, our personal framework, brokenness, upbringing, and past experiences influence us in ways that we're not even aware of, right? And then these things help to create these pictures, which are truly projections, pre predictions, right? And interpretations of what something means. I really want you to grab that, guys. You put it in your framework. You think about how God disappointed you. You think about the thing that didn't come through for you. You think about the thing that didn't work out for you, okay? And now you draw these connections. Many times our personal framework, our brokenness, our upbringing, our past experiences, these things influence us in ways we're not even aware of, right? And then they help to then create these pictures, which are really projections, their predictions and their interpretations of what something means. But that's out of that, that's out of my brokenness. That's out of my upbringing. That's that that's out of my past experiences. That ain't necessarily God. See, we then cling to we then cling to that picture, whatever picture we created out of our framework. We then cling to that picture. We attach our hopes to it, our expectations. Right. Not to God's word. Get this. Not to God's word. But to the world. That's right. The world that we created with our perception which could have been tainted, most likely it was, tainted by our own internal passions and desires. Oh my goodness. Game changer alert. <laughs> Guys, do you get that? We clinging to a picture that we created out of our own brokenness, out of our own past experiences, right? Because when you're broken and you have bad past experiences and then someone comes along and says something positive, you're like, oh my goodness, that's going to mean this, 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 and this. And it could, it's, you know, it could, but maybe it won't contain all of what you thought. And that still sets you up for disappointment because now we're attached to it. Our hopes are on it, right? Our expectations are on it. Not on God's word. No, 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 no. We heard God's word one time, but then we went in our imagination and we created a world of what that now represents. Oh, my world's going to look like this. Oh, my world's going to look like that. Oh, my ministry going to look like this. Oh, my ministry going to look like that. Come on, guys. I know I ain't the only one. I know, I know, I know that I'm not the only one. Ain't no way I'm the only one. Right? Come on, guys. Have you ever been disappointed? Messing with God. That's real. That's real talk. <laughs> okay. So when God disappoints, right? We started off. What do you do? Right? What do you do when God disappoints you? Well, here's the first thing that you do. You remember when God disappoints, remember God is not required to fulfill our pictures. Only his promise. Ooh, that's a mic drop. Ooh, mic drop, baby. When God disappoints, I'm going to say this three times. When God disappoints, remember, God is not required to fulfill our pictures. He's only required to fulfill his promise. Let me look in the eyeballs. Come on, let me look in the eyeballs, guys. Come on, come on, one more time. One more time for the people in the back. When God disappoints, when you feel disappointed, messing with God, when your hopes, your expectations, your dreams, what you anticipate to happen in your life, when you get that all wrapped up and 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 now you're clinging to a picture that you created, right? <laughs> we must remember at the point of discouragement, of deflation, of feeling down when we're disappointed, we must remember God is not required to fulfill our pictures, only his promise. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We painted the picture. He provided the promise. We painted the picture. Say that with me one more time. He provided the promise. But we, with our own minds, out of our own framework, we then painted the picture. And he's not required to fulfill that picture. 
He's only required to fulfill his promise. Mic drop. All right, guys. So what's the solution? What do we do? Here it is. I'm going to give you five points, and then I'm going to bounce. Get up out of here. Here it is. When you receive a prophetic word or read the word of God, a.k.a. the Bible, or receive an unction, right, that, that God is speaking to you, right? However you name it or frame it, when you think God has said something to you, here's your five steps. Number one, write it down. Write it down. Give yourself some breathing room. Don't just take it and run with it and just, you know, make up your pictures, right? Write it down. Number two, after you've written it down, ask for wisdom and insight concerning each of the words. See, this is something that I didn't do. This is what I was chopping it up with, you know, um, uh, Pastor Kerwin on, was that when they spoke those prophetic words, I did write it down. I did write it down. But by the time I got around to writing it down, I had already painted my pictures, you see, about how ministry was going to look, right? And just to finish that story, again, I'm going to unpack that story in another episode because i want you to see how we are and i and let me just give you this preview we are ministry ministry is not something that you necessarily lead but it's something that you actually live right we are ministry we are the ministry of reconciliation he's given it to us but we also are it Woohoo! i can't wait to drop that one on you okay so in summary, I had a picture of what ministry looked like, of what full-time ministry looked like. Over the last couple of years, God has revealed to me that it could have components of that, but ministry is much bigger than Sunday morning. It's much bigger than the four walls. It's much bigger than your traditional sense. It's much bigger uh, than you know, all the, all, you know, all the various things that I had wrapped up in my image. Okay. So my, my framework has been destroyed. Uh, my scope for ministry has been expanded. My borders have been expanded. And so I see full-time ministry much, much different now. And I now know and have come to the place of acceptance that I am in full-time ministry. That's what I am in right now. Literally, I'm in full-time ministry. Am I in the traditional sense full-time ministry? No, but I'm no longer looking for that. I no longer need that because now I've had this revelation and this awakening of what ministry truly is. Okay, so I just wanted to finish that story because sometimes some of my old bad habits is I'll start a story, but I don't wrap it up. OK, so we were just talking about the fact that, hey, when you laid hands on me, X, Y, X, Y and Z years ago, I had these pictures that I've been clinging to and they were never fulfilled. But now I've come full circle and I see. Right. I see what mystery really is. And so the fact is, God never disappointed me. It was my own pictures that were tor tormenting me. And now I know better. And now I see uh, that he has fulfilled and is fulfilling his promise. Not my picture, but he is right now fulfilling his promise in my life, guys. And he'll do the same for you. OK. All right. Uh, so number one, write it down. Number two, ask for wisdom and insight concerning each of the words. Lord, give me wisdom. Give me insight. What, what does this word mean? What does this mean for my life? Right. Number three, ask for the ability. And this is real. Ask for the ability patience is an ability people just say i want patience okay well hmm, be careful with what you ask for ask for the ability to be patient long enough right to receive an understanding because you ask for the wisdom and the insight but now you got to be patient because the way he wants to bring that about is going to be on his terms so now you hey lord give me the ability to be patient long enough to receive the understanding of what you intend to do and 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 really how you intend to fulfill it okay in my life number four ask for the gratitude many of us we don't have enough gratitude we don't appreciate we don't really celebrate right um the fact uh that that you know number one god's even speaking and god's even working with us but number four ask for the gratitude to accept what he said with no immediate projections be grateful that he said anything and be grateful that he spoke to you and that he has an intention for you. But the gratitude of being able to accept whatever he says 
and not have to tie all of these, you know, projections and these pictures to it. You feel me? And then number five, ask for the grace, right? That empowerment, ask for that grace to accept how and when he wants to manifest it. Because when he says it to you, we want it like yesterday. We want it immediately, right? That's when you sound really, um, really educated, right? You don't say immediately. You say immediately, right? That's a that's a joke from a long time ago, <laughs> right? But you want it immediately, right? I want this thing now, like yesterday, right? Because it's so good, right? Well, really what's so good is your picture of it, right? Because we always paint these pictures of grandeur, of awesomeness, right of dopeness right of the of the, oh my life is about to transform in this amazing way and that's cool but pump the brakes a little bit and get god involved now in what he said god you said this now help me to help me to relate to what you said help me to chill out a little bit help me to you know you know form ideas and um, help me to be in alignment with what it is that you share um, so that we don't run the risk of being all gassed up on a picture that we painted and then we get disappointed when God don't do it that way. All right. Hope that makes sense, guys. So that's it, man. That's it. Just wanted to share my story. Wanted to share that. Wanted to relate to y'all. And uh, I hope it makes sense. Go back and listen to it again. Um, apply it. Put it in your back pocket. Right. Use it now if you're in that season of disappointment or save it for somewhere down the road and you forget, um, you know, that you are sometimes on autopilot, just painting pictures all over the place. And, um, you know, that can set you up for disappointment. All right, guys, your support is significant. I need you. I need you like now. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not a singer. And see, I, I know my lane. I know my ministry. All right, guys. Uh, any questions that you have, please email me at info at IamThePossible.com. Any questions, any prayer requests, hit me up. Info at IamThePossible.com. Uh, YouTube channel. Come on, guys. If you are not watching me on the tube, if you are not a part of this visual experience, then I invite you come over to the tube, right? Type it in. I am the possible in YouTube. Find me, Travel C W Lynch. Subscribe and hit the little bell. Uh, get involved, man. Right? Get this thing jumping every Wednesday, every Sunday, and bonus tracks all throughout the week of other content that I feel that God wants me to share with you. So hit that notification and be the first to get that information. Hit that notification to be the first to get that information. Ah, oh, that boy rhyming. All right. Okay. I'm not a rapper. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. Okay. Uh, share, share, share. Please tell somebody, a friend, family member, somebody, coworker, anybody who you think might benefit from this information. Please, please, please share me out. Uh, I want to increase my reach um i want and it's again guys it's not even my reach right but it's you bring being the bridge you being that go between between god right and this information all of it's inspired by god right all of it's being inspired by the source we want to get people back connected with the source so please share 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 um and then lastly apple Podcasts. love for you to subscribe download and uh listen every wednesday and listen every sunday to a brand new episode uh, twice a week now because God's given me so much to share and so much to say. Um, excuse me, uh, that, that now we couldn't do once a week. I can't, I can't wait to know one day a week now. Now I got two and he may increase me to, to the point where I'm so free I can do it daily. You know, who knows? Never know, right? What God has in plan, has in store or has planned for your life. Um, but again, guys, subscribe, subscribe, share, share, hit me up. Uh, whatever you want to do, man. I just love and just I just I just appreciate you guys. Um, that is it. I'm gonna let you go. I'm I'm gonna get up out of here. I'm learning. People attention spans, man. You know, people just want to get that hit. Hey, man, share that information. Get to the point. I want to get that hit. Boom, and I want to keep it pushing. So um, I'm trying my best to cut down on all the extra chatter. And just get to it and drop it on you so you can get that info and you can keep it pushing throughout the week. So hope that it's inspired you, that it's educated you, that it's motivated you, that it's empowered you, that it's done something positive in your life. This is Travel C.W. Lynch. I am Mr. What What. 
Yes, yes, I am your, that's right, your, your self-worth specialist. And this is the I am the possible podcast experience. The bonus track. Yes. I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm believing in you. I'm believing in you. Until next time. Until next time. Peace.